here today with a really neat little 38 special small frame carry revolver from the folks at Smith & Wesson. Smith introduced the J-Frame small frame 38 special, I believe it was in 1950 with the introduction of the Model 36, which was an all steel uh, 38 special small J-Frame size revolver that is a, still a wonderful little revolver to this day. Since that time, the uh, J-Frame 38s have had numerous iterations, uh, different uh, styles, different frame uh, materials, and different uh, different weights. They make a lightweight uh, aluminum ones and all that. They're all just wonderful. This is the latest in the series. They've been making these for a few years now. This is called the Bodyguard 38, uh, whereas the... Uh, Model 36s and the other steel frames are, are all steel and they weigh quite a bit more than this. This one here is a, a unique hybrid of uh, polymers and steels and aluminum alloy. The grip frame, which encompasses the trigger guard and uh, all the way to the under the cylinder, the basically the, the from the cylinder back and underneath is polymer on this. The internal lockwork parts are steel. The cylinder frame, which is everything basically from the grip frame up until you get to the barrel, is uh, a lightweight aluminum alloy finished in a blackened finish. It's very attractive. The cylinder is a five-shot cylinder. Uh, it's made from stainless steel with a blackened finish. It's also very attractive. goes very well with the blackened finish on the rest of the revolver. The barrel is an inch and seven-eighths in length and is a uh, two-piece configuration. The outside of it is aluminum alloy with a nice slab-sided appearance. It looks very nice, and the inside of the barrel is, is a barrel liner of stainless steel. It makes it very strong, but still lightweight. The barrel is very nicely fitted to the gun, and it's very nicely fitted to the face of the cylinder. Uh, I don't really know what the barrel cylinder gap is on this because it's so tight, I couldn't fit a .002 feeler gauge in there, so it's less than two thousandths of an inch. The cylinder release will be a little bit unfamiliar for those of you who have long known and loved Smith & Wesson revolvers as I have. Normally the cylinder release is on the port side of the revolver and you push it forward to release the cylinder. On these, it's on top of the revolver and it's a, a nice grooved piece that goes all the way across the top and you just push it forward and pops your cylinder out. It works very well and it also gives an advantage to the left-handed shooters because it is a fully ambidextrous design. You can push that just as easily with your left thumb as with your right. The trigger is your typical Smith & Wesson color case trigger. It is of the combat configuration, meaning that it's a narrow trigger with a smooth face on it. And it, uh, it operates very nicely. It's a pretty smooth trigger pull, and the trigger pull is only six, about six and a half pounds, six pounds, 7.2 ounces average, and that's a very good trigger pull for a light revolver like this, and it's really important on a light revolver like this because you don't want the trigger pull to be eight or 10 pounds, so much so that it pulls your sights off just as the trigger breaks. The bodyguard is an internal hammer revolver, meaning that there is a hammer in this, but it's shrouded inside the the, uh, the frame. So you can't cock the hammer back for single action. It's double action only, and it works just great for that. Makes it all the more important that you have a nice, smooth, reasonably lightweight trigger pull. The grip is a one-piece design. It's very ergonomic. It feels great in the hand. It's small but it's big enough to get a good hold of. I think it'll be comfortable for most shooters' hands. I have a fairly large hand and it nestles in there just great. Doesn't want to squirm around while you're shooting it. The sights are as nice as you can expect on a small revolver. The rear sight is uh, an integrated notch. The front sight is a pinned-in ramp sight. Uh, it's, it's nicely designed as it is. It's black and it's heavily serrated so it doesn't want to glare on you. But it's a pinned in sight so it's easy to change out. If you decide you want a different kind, any number of sight designs can fit on this thing. Something else that really makes this a neat carry option is that it comes equipped from the factory with a crimson trace laser sight on it. It's uh, mounted right here at the top of the frame and it's uh, 
it's got an activation button right here on top and it's so easy to use you can operate it with either your right or your left thumb and it just works great it's um you've got a constant on mode you hit it again you got a pulse mode uh, and again it's off it's just so easy to use it's just a great thing to have because in in dim light shooting conditions or at night something like that a laser sight really can be the difference between life and death you just put that dot on whatever you need to shoot and go to work another really cool thing about the crimson trace laser that's included on these bodyguards is that you can adjust them without taking them off of the revolver they've got a windage adjustment and an elevation adjustment right here on the top and on the side unlike a lot of small frame 38 revolvers uh the lightweight ones and even some of the steel ones from other makers this bodyguard is rated for plus p ammo so you don't have to only shoot the pipsqueak loads you can uh put some pretty stout loads in this thing because there's a lot of steel backing this up it's a it's a, a polymer grip frame but that's not where your stress is where the stress points are is steel and you can shoot plus p in this without any problems one thing that lends to the strength of this revolver is that it locks up not only at the back of the cylinder like we're used to seeing, but also it locks up at the front of the cylinder frame at the crane. There's a ball detent lock up in there that really makes this thing strong. It's, it'll handle anything that you want to throw it with a plus P38. One thing that makes this an ideal little carry revolver is that it's only a little over 14 ounces in weight unloaded. And that's, you know, that's less than a pound. He's hardly, you can carry this thing around and hardly ever know what's in your pocket or on your hip or in your boot or wherever you want to carry one of these. It's very comfortable to carry and it's very easy to shoot. And that's why I recommend uh, revolvers like this for people who are not really that familiar don't want to master the manual of arms of a semi-automatic pistol or lack the strength to work a slide on a semi-automatic pistol or something like that these are simplicity in itself you load them up and you shoot them and uh, that's another good thing about a revolver as it relates to semi-automatic uh, they may not hold as many rounds as a semi-automatic but you can put different kinds of rounds in them that you could never feed in a semi-automatic different bullet designs and things like that that you can never get to feed in a semi-automatic to begin with if you come upon a dead uh, round all you got to do is just keep pulling the trigger and it'll uh, it'll light off the next one for you and uh, for people who are not that familiar with guns who are new shooters or uh, older folks a lot of times want to carry these because they're just so easy to use a real benefit to the use of polymers for the uh, grip frame on these the non-stress areas on these not only to reduce weight but to reduce cost these have an msrp of only 546 dollars but when you compare it to other comparable revolvers, you can see that that's quite a bit of savings, especially when you factor in that it comes factory equipped with the Crimson Trace laser. Uh, those things are not cheap, and because the best never is. But if you go, to, if you look at the models that have uh, a lasers incorporated into them, or if you want to add the cost of a laser to retrofit to your gun, you see that $546 MSRP on these really is not much. It represents quite a bargain. A good all-around load for practice and plinking is Magtech's 158 grain lead round nose bullet. It's just your basic 38 special load, but it's a good, good one to shoot with, a good one to practice with. It's just a lot of fun. My favorite all-around 38 special load is Double Tap's 148 grain full wide cutter bullet. It's a cast full wide cutter, not the old swage full wide cutters like we used to have when I was growing up. Uh, they won't lead your barrel near as bad as the swage bullets did. They're very accurate, they're a target load, they're very nice, but uh, with the full caliber flat nose on it, it makes a decent self-defense load too. These are running a pretty sedate 875 feet per second, but it's a dandy load. It's a very accurate load. It's my favorite load all around for 38s. I use it in a lot of my older 38s. I don't want to beat them up too bad. They're good in the newer 38s too, even those that'll handle plus P loads because they don't beat you up too bad.
A good self-defense load that's not going to break the bank is Winchester's 125 grain white box jacketed hollow point. It's a well-constructed bullet. They're running around closer to a thousand feet per second out of a two-inch barrel, and they're they're really a nice load, and they're uh, relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of it. When it comes to carrying a J-frame revolver for backup or personal defense or whatever, it is hard to beat a pocket holster. It's my preferred mode of carry for these. And my favorite is the pocket protector from my friend Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters in Prescott, Arizona. Rob makes these very simply and very rugged, as the name of his company implies. It's just as simplicity itself. It's basically a leather pocket molded around a J-frame. The smooth side of the leather is in, so it's smooth on the draw. The rough side of the leather is out, which helps it to stay in one place in your pocket which is something that's vitally important because you need to have the same presentation every time you go to reach for your pistol. Also, the rough out leather helps the holster to stay in your pocket when you go to draw it. You don't want to be pulling your gun out and then using up one or two precious seconds of the rest of your life trying to get the gun off of the holster, the holster off of the gun once you get it out of your pocket. Also, there's a sharp point on the top end of this that digs into the corner of your pocket when you're trying to draw it. It leaves it in your pocket. It works wonderfully like that. These are only $35 from Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters in Prescott, Arizona. And they are just the best kind of pocket holsters that you can get. He also, on these for the little J-frames, he puts a little slot on the outside of it to stick a couple of extra rounds in there because you never know. The Bodyguard 38s, especially the one with the Crimson Trace laser on it, are a fine option for a carry gun. If you're looking for a five-shot 38 revolver to protect you or protect your family, have a close look at these. I highly recommend these. They're really nice. They're rugged. They're simple. They're just a dandy little 38 revolver. And if that's the sort of thing you're looking for, you need to give a close, hard look at the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard.